All right, guys. Well, as you know, your sexual desire is probably much stronger than your partner's. And in fact, during certain times of the month, your partner is not that interested in sex. And I want to share with you the hormonal reasons why this might be. Uh, drawing upon a recently published paper, well, it's actually 10 years old, but I think it's totally relevant still today, titled Hormonal Predictors of Sexual Motivation in Natural Menstrual Cycles. So it turns out that it's really important for you to know your partner's ovulatory patterns because uh, leading up to ovulation is when your woman is going to be most interested in being intimate with you. Now, after ovulation, what happens is there is a rise in uh, luteinizing hormones. It's called, it's called the luteal phase. Progesterone increases, and that's when your woman's desire is going to drop. And this is really important for you to acknowledge because we know that relationship satisfaction and is intimately connected to sexual satisfaction. So if you're trying to put the moves on your woman and she's just like, look, I'm not in interested right now, I'm not in the mood, I can't get aroused, you might think, well, my partner is not sexually attracted to me, so therefore I feel rejected, and then that can create a little brick in the relationship and cause strife. So it's important that you understand that after ovulation, your partner is going to lose sexual desire for a week or you know 10 days or something like that. And why is this? This is because after ovulation, there's a, a dramatic rise in progesterone and that can mimic uh, essentially the state of pregnancy and that will decrease sexual desire in females. And so this is why it's really important to acknowledge this so that you can plan accordingly. It's not probably ideal to plan a beach vacation or to do these different things uh, right after ovulation, for example. So a lot of couples are actually utilizing uh, the ovulatory calendar in their partners to plan different trips and weekend getaways and dates to optimize the window uh, when, say, your partner is going to be most receptive to intimate encounters and maybe do different activities after ovulation. Because as you can see from these graphs from this particular article, this was studying women in, the, in their early 20s, finding that after ovulation, and that is usually around day 14 in the cycle if menstruation is day zero, uh, that's when desire will drop. And so you don't want to take that personally. You don't want to be really anxious or upset or uh, disappointed in your partner because the high progesterone uh, afterwards can also change uh, mood and, and you don't want to get into a conflict with your significant other. So it's important for you to understand when your woman is ovulating. And so how might you do that? Well, there's various books on this. I can link some of the books in the description below that help me become more educated on uh, ovulation and menstruation and the different changes in hormones and the rise in estrogen before ovulation and the rise in progesterone afterwards. Um, but it, this is really important. And, and how can you start to test this and become more proactive in your your partner's hormonal uh, health journey is using basal body temperature first thing in the morning, getting a digital thermometer and putting it near your, your woman's bedside and making sure that both of you are tracking her temperature so that you can see there's natural ebbs and flows uh, leading up to ovulation. But right when she's ovulating, you're going to see a marked increase in basal body temperature. And that is correlated with a rise in progesterone and a drop in sexual desire for about a week or so. And so I think uh, it's good for all partners and all couples to be aware of this so that there's not expectations or uh, feelings of disappointment when you're trying to be intimate, but your partner from a hormonal perspective is just not in that state because of the, the rise in progesterone. So uh, I wanted to provide this for a lot of you. I know that uh, some of the, the meme pages that I follow on Instagram uh, talk about how you know men initiate 100% of the time and women are receptive, say, 10 to 25% of the time. And part of this could be where they are in their cycle. So when you're uh, more in tune with this, with, with her changes in hormones, and you're a part of the process, uh, this can create um, more consistent expectations when it comes to intimacy. And I think it is probably good for both of you to be aware of this. And then you'll also know from a fertility standpoint, if you want to have children, when your woman is going to be most fertile uh, in the six days leading up to ovulation, uh, and especially the, the peak day, and that is incidentally the day before the temperature really starts to rise. And so this fertility awareness method is getting a lot of renewed uh, interest and a lot of people are participating in this because of course there's all sorts of side effects linked with hormonal birth control and uh, progestin containing IUDs and patches and injectables and all that We're really problematic in fact several studies find that uh, part of the reason why libido can drop in women who are on 
hormonal birth control and or hormonal uh, releasing IUDs is because they contain synthetic progesterones known as progestins, and these can tank libido, uh, which is kind of interesting if you, th you think about the sexual uh, revolution and all of these uh, access to hormonal contraceptives. Uh, incidentally, they actually decrease libido in women. They decrease testosterone. So I think it's better for most couples to be aware of their ovulatory patterns uh, and be a participant in you know monitoring basal body temperature and cervical mucus and cervical fluid uh, to be aware of where your woman is in her cycle so that you can uh, maximize uh, intimacy and expectations, really. Because if you're really in the mood and you know she just ovulated, uh, you can manage that expectations and, and realize that, hey, look, from a hormonal perspective, you know, high progesterone will probably mean the chances of you being intimate with your partner is on the lower end of normal. So maybe you plan for hikes or do outdoor stuff or do something different and manage your own expectations and prevent feelings of rejection in that relationship. So more on this to come if you found this helpful. Uh, let me know by hitting that like button. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and what apps or uh, different devices you are using, uh, especially if you're a cycling female, to monitor your fertility and ovulatory cycle. I would love to know and I think a lot of people will benefit from those comments. So appreciate you tuning all the way through. We'll catch you on a future video down the road.